Okay, guys, and very welcome back to the show. And I have a very rare in-person interview today. And this man is lucky enough to give me one of them. It's Mr. PJ Farley. Howdy. How are you, man? I'm fantastic. And we're in the same screen this time mm. and not... Not split screen. Your satellite, right. Mm. Look, man, great to catch up with you again. How is this tour going so far? Back in the UK again, third time in three years. Yeah, pretty impressive. It's uh, It's been killer. The first two shows have been sold out, and this one's supposed to be really good as well. And we've uh, we've graduated to the upstairs room here at the Academy, so looking forward to that. And um, I think this is our biggest tour here. This is the band's biggest tour in the UK. And since I've been in the band, they've been going up and up. So, yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's a coincidence or not, but I mean, I'll just, I'll, just, I'll let you guys say. Yeah, because actually the last tour was also your biggest tour. Right. But now you're after kind of outdoing it again. Yeah, yeah. What do you think it is about Fozzie that's bringing a new, wider audience to people? You know, I don't know, man. It's always been an anomaly um, for, between the States and the UK, because there's bands that can't get arrested in the States that have always had a career here and vice versa. Um, so I don't know. I, I really don't have the the answer for that. If I did, I would, you know, take advantage of it. Yeah. Actually, I've never asked you this question. This would be the third time we've been interviewed. How did you actually end up in the band? Well, look, I've, obviously I've known, me and Chris have been friends for a better part of almost 15 years. And uh, during COVID, they had some shows booked that they wanted to do. And they were in areas that were still open, like South Dakota, big bike rally out there and oh, just yeah, go run it. I remember. Fozzie yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. For Fozzie yeah. responsible yeah. for 350,000 cases of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Um, and the guy that had playing bass with him at the time that wasn't comfortable touring. So Chris and Rich called me to see if I would, you know, help out and just do that run of shows and whatever else maybe was on the table at that point. So I'm like, sign me up, of course. And then once I got out there, it was just kind of like, um, I mean, yeah, I had met Rich kind of had a little bit. And, uh, and same with the, uh, the other guys I met on the boat once, but, you know, very briefly. I didn't know them or anyone in the camp besides Chris. And, um, you know, once I got on the bus, it was just like I, I felt like I've been there since day one. It was just really easy, and it just worked out pretty well. And I think uh, it was mutual that this works. And of course, you're not the new guy anymore because yeah. Grant has since come in. Right. Um, what was it like kind of adjusting into the band? And obviously, you kind of touched on it there. Like, everyone's very open and you kind of knew them to see and stuff like that. So that helped. Yeah. I mean, you know, anytime you get somebody new in the band, um, it, it it changes the dynamic on and off stage, um, which, which is refreshing. You know, it's always refreshing. It, it should be, at least. You know, that's the whole reason a change happens. So, um, that's been the case, you know, Grant is, you know, he's a lot younger than us, so he brings the average age of the band down. <laughs> um, but, you know, and he's, it's great, you know, it's great to see and be around, it's contagious, you know, so on both on stage and off stage. Yeah. So it's been, it's been great, you know, I think this, I think, you know, the, the original guys in the band will, uh, meaning, you know, Chris, Rich, Billy, you know, they think this is the best it's been so far. Yeah, and it's a nice mix of people then, as you said, as well. And, yeah. like, um, obviously with Grant coming in then as well, it brings, as you said, like someone younger. And then people people always kind of notice that when they see you guys there. They're like, wow, this guy is so young. Yeah. You know? What's that feel like? Or does it make you feel old? It's funny because <laughs> I've always been the youngest guy in all the bands that I've been in. Yeah. I'm, I'm over the threshold now where that's those odds are against me now. And Grant has made sure of that. Yeah. <laughs> Where does Fozzie, like you've been playing music for a long time, like where does Fozzie rank for you in terms of some of the shows you've done? Oh, I mean, well, I would say number one. I mean, we just did Wembley, mm. and that was by far, you know, the biggest thing I'd done, even though it was two minutes. It was, I, when like you asked me how that was, I said it was like two minutes of euphoria. And I always tell people, even if we played an hour and a half set, I'd only remember those two minutes. Mm. So you could tell me I played an entire show. I would remember Judas mm. and the first two minutes of it with just everybody singing it and the, the pyro that I didn't even know was going off. I knew <laughs> we were having some stuff in front of us. We were told not to go near it. I didn't know about all this. I'm like, holy shit. So, I mean, that was like, it was like headlining Wembley. So that was right on top. Sits right there. 
what was the reaction like from friends and family when you told them you were doing that? Obviously, they were watching it back home. Yeah, I mean, pretty much the same. They're like, what, what was that like? You know, it just looked so massive on TV, especially, you know, let alone being there. So it was, it felt as good as it looked. That's what I say. Yeah. Uh, Chris said a while ago, and it's something that kind of resonated with me. He was talking about putting out singles yeah. as opposed to albums now. And I think like it's the way a lot of bands are going. Yeah. What do you think of that formula going forward? Personally, I hate it. Okay. You know, I'm a, I'm a I'm an old school dog. I like you know, the record mentality, the whole purpose, the sequencing, you know, the ride you go on. You know, but but I get it. People just don't have the attention span anymore. The song goes on a playlist. It gets it's like a lottery ball. You know, it just gets popped up. So at this day and age, it's records are just so much time effort money and so much of it gets lost you know i mean like he always uh refers to boombox is a very deep record you every song on that record personally i feel is amazing and there's just someone so many that we don't play and we play half the record yeah and there's so many that we don't play and they'll never see the light of day and it's just it's a shame so although we like making records it's we're in a fight we can't win so mm -hmm. Why do it? You know, just keep dripping them out. Yeah. So you think those singles might eventually lead to an album down the road then? Well, it's funny because that's how records are released now. You you drip out four or five singles over six or eight months and then you drop the record and then it's over. Mm. It's so backwards. It yeah. used to be the opposite. So I don't know. I don't know. If, I mean, you know, with the resurgence of vinyl and stuff, who knows if that's maybe the seed of it kind of turning around and people getting you know that feeling of holding a record and looking at it especially in the big you know format yeah. i mean bringing it back full circle you know it's not like a cd or a booklet you know or anything mm -hmm. you're you're getting you can open the double wide and stuff so hopefully that gets people interested in you know artwork mm -hmm. and reading the credits and the lyrics and you know maybe learning about the band and you know it's getting building that more of a rapport getting a little more interest than just a file on your phone yeah i used to look forward to getting an album and obviously normally a single will come out with the album and then i'd be listening to the album thinking oh i wonder what song they're going to release next or right. i wonder what the music video will be for this so that's yeah. kind of your that mentality right. too totally yeah what was australia like that was my first time there it was unbelievable i mean it was the first day of summer there and we went in december and I didn't know that, so I got there. I'm like, what the hell? First day of summer? Scratch my head. Besides the fact that we flew, we lost a day. And we lo I remember calling home, and it was a different time zone, a different day, a different month, and a, a different season. I'm like, what? Just I felt like I was in space. Yeah. But um, it was beautiful. What a beautiful country. I mean, it was just um, short but sweet, though. Mm. And it's you know it's a lot of work going over there because yeah. there's no tour buses over there. Everything's fly date, so not a lot of sleep, but great crowds, and um, I can't wait to get back. Anywhere on the bucket list for you to tour with this band? Um, I'd, I'd love to get back to Europe. I've been over in um, like, like Italy, Spain, Greece. I've done you know Germany and stuff with when I was playing with Lita Ford. Um, I'd love to eventually get back there. I know Fozzie's took some time off from touring over there. Um, maybe we'll circle back to that because that would be great. Yeah. A Japan, too. I'd like to get to Japan. ACDC just got announced European tour over in, obviously, Europe. Maybe you could support them. What would that be like? I'd be a big fat yes on our part, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, what songs do you like in playing then at the moment? Um, Spotlight's great because it's, you know, it's new, it's yeah. fresh. It's a uh, crowd digs it. Um, I love Purifier, um, a song that we sometimes play in the set. Drinking with Jesus is always one of my yeah. favorite songs. Yes. And um, Enemy, Enemy is like the centerpiece of our set. Billy and Rich go off and do their guitar duel, mm -hmm. and you know it's just me and Chris just kind of sit back and just groove out and zone out, and uh, the crowd just eats it up. So it's a highlight. I'd always be saying to the guys, God pounds his nails. That's a great song. That should make a comeback at some point. Yeah, we, we did that last year. We're, what month is it now? Last year. 
Okay, yeah. It is February, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's, I think spring last year we did it. Mm. Yeah. Just off the Jericho cruise as well. What is what what is that like? It's it's seems crazy from the outside. It's crazy on the inside too. Yeah. It's uh but it's really cool because it, it's such a great community. I mean, people just have so much fun. There's I've done it four times and there's never been any drama or you know it, it's it's amazing to see actually to see how many people are just out there all for the same reason and just having a great time. And you know, we're all just co-mingling and it's just one big happy ship. Done a lot of covers over there. Um, I've seen some surfacing up on the internet. Will there be any of them kind of featuring in Fozzy in the future? Or was that just kind of fun at the time? Uh, you never know. We're talking about it. Yeah. Some of them made made the highlight reels. So uh, we'll Bl see. Blinding lights. Possibly. Not, not a very Fozzy esque no, song. No, 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 no. That's exactly just crazy enough to work. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, that's another thing I always say to the guys as well. SOS by the Perfect the example. Abba, the Abbott cover. Like, that's fucking fantastic. Yeah, perfect you know? example. Yep. So look. That kind of wraps us up here, man. Look, I'd like Great. to thank you for your time today. Yeah, no problem. And uh, see you up on the stage. Yeah. Thanks very In much, person. man. Thanks, buddy. Cheers, man.